Previously on Super Idols RPG. Our heroes earned a well-deserved break after the action and stress of Camp Grand Star, enjoying a day at Splash World Water Park. It wasn't entirely a break for Queen Bee, however, since she had still not detransformed since heading to the camp. And as she spent time at the park, she noticed a few of her bees being drawn to her without her commanding them to do so. I'm sure it's nothing. Just like how the thing Karen said she would explain to everyone after they got home will surely be nothing. Would I, pre-show narrator Aaron, lie to you? Find out on today's episode of Super Idols RPG. Hey there everyone, and welcome back to Super Idols RPG. As always, I'm your GM, Aaron Cerise, and with me today are Dana. Hello. T. Hello. Drac. Hey. Luca. Hi. Liv. Hello. And extra special returning guest, Alice Kira. Ha ha! Yay! Oh, hi! Yay. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so excited. Ah! Let's go! <laughs> This is the heist hype. episode. Heist episode. Heist episode. <laughs> heist. 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 <laughs> Mark two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Electric, Electric boogaloo. boogaloo. Let's, let's I was waiting really for it. God damn it. <laughs> Had to say it. Had to. So you all finished up your wonderful water park day on Monday. It was a really great time, especially after the weekend that y'all had. But you all know that you have a lot of stuff to talk about and plan. Um, and I think you all come to the conclusion that at least after a good night's rest and maybe like a relatively normal school day to like come down from everything that happened over the weekend, you need to get to work as soon as you can because Anne is still out there. Kelvin is probably still out there. Both of them under God knows what conditions and you don't want them there much longer than they have to be. So, well, we don't know about Kelvin technically, right? You've suspected strongly by this point. Um, I think at this point we could do like uh, an investigation uh, check to see if we got to talk to Kyoto Joe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you wanted to roll something to do with that quick to see if you got anything by reaching out to Kyoto Joe, you could. <laughs> Why not? I guess that would probably be like an industry espionage. Mm hmm. Okay, so a straight superior? Yeah. Oh, Ooh, very nice. Okay. Alan finds out some stuff. Yeah. Alan finds Kyoto Joe's LinkedIn and hits the jackpot. <laughs> no, more seriously, I think it's not that hard to get a hold of Kyoto Joe. You find whatever social media that he has. And tell me what you ask Kyoto Joe on, it, actually. I'm going to contact from the official Queen Bee account and just ask if there's any chance we could arrange a rematch. Hmm, I see. Hmm, how much would he disclose to you if it's just from the Queen Bee account? Not much in an initial message, I think. What would you say to, like, coax some more uh, personal information out of him in a conversation thread? Well, I would try to be appreciative of their efforts and uh, see how much uh, I was impressed with the stagecraft at Calvin's show and how much I would love to collaborate again and learn. Yeah, I think you get to talking about stagecraft for a little while. Maybe the conversation veers off a little off the topic that you'd intended, but I think it's enough to get Kyoto Joe's trust in you for a bit. I know this is going really quickly through this and not actually role-playing it out, but <laughs> there's other stuff we need to get to today. Uh, but eventually, I think you get him to a point where he, where he's willing to be more like, actually, you know, I am kind of worried about Kelvin right now. He hasn't even contacted me recently for like a couple weeks now, and that's not usual for him. Kind of wondering if something's up between him and management at Crimson Signal, but again, haven't heard anything, so not sure what's up there. Well, uh, I just asked him to let me know to pass the message if he gets a chance, and that uh, I'd love to discuss stagecraft uh, further. Yeah, sure. No, that'd be amazing. You're you're a really great person to talk to, um, and like I I wouldn't have expected it based on your stage persona, but I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Um, Kelvin's kind of the same way in a lot of ways. 
Well, you know, someone has to play the heel. Yeah, exactly. It's all part of the show. And I think you probably leave the conversation on that kind of note where you'll have more to chat with Kyoto Joe about in the future and that specifically the information about there being tension between Zero Degrees and Crimson Signal and even Kyoto Joe not hearing from them for a while would probably be enough of an indicator that, yeah, your suspicions are probably correct. There's one last thing that I'd like to, to add. Okay. Because uh, the Tuesday morning before school, uh, uh, Angie gets a text from Alan. It's a uh, cat emoji, train emoji. Then a few seconds go by and she gets uh, a selfie. It's a very panicked looking Alan showing that now their hair is jet black. And Angie responds with like, question mark, question mark. Did you get it dyed? It looks cute. No, I woke up like this. I mean, I, mean, I, I think I didn't transform right. I was so tired and... Oh, like dot, dot, dot in text. <laughs> Am I going to get stuck? I don't know. Let's let's meet in the morning before class and we'll we'll figure it out. Okay? Okay. And I assume we do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can cut to just before school. Uh, you can meet up maybe like wherever near the school building that you would want to meet up. Okay. Now, Angie's probably a bit biased because she knows Alan is Queen Bee. But I guess this question for you, Luca, would it seem like with just the hair difference, it would tip anybody off or anything like that based on what you think? I mean, the hairstyle is different enough. Like, more than anything, they look like Emo Peter Parker. But... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> would they have their hoodie up, maybe? Oh, they have a beanie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So other than the hair, um, as far as we know, everything else, like you're not dressed entirely in yellow or No, no, like no, that. no. It's just, just the hair. Just. Okay. I, I had a really hard time turning back last night. It, it took me like more, a, a few tries. Were you, were you transformed the whole time at camp? Well, yeah, you were there. Yeah, that's that's right. I was there, but I don't know. I, can, I guess I assumed, oh, I don't think you're supposed to stay transformed for that long. Yeah. Fish. Maybe it'll just go back to normal on its own, and you might just have to wear hats. I guess, maybe, I, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't transform for a while, or... Yeah. Well, maybe if, it, if I transform and then turn back, it's going to be, like, resetting. Maybe. I don't know. Um, maybe we should ask Karen. She's kind of the most senior member. Maybe she knows something. Yeah. Okay, so when we get Karen alone, we'll ask her. Totally, like, non-suspiciously. Absolutely. <laughs> so, okay. I guess I... Uh, is is the hat okay? Does it cover everything? Yeah, yeah. I can't help but think of, like, Jughead from Riverdale. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. I will just say that Fort McNally is a very lax school. They won't make you take off your hat during class. You yeah. can. I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. I have a hat. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so we'll stick with hats for now. And maybe... Karen know something. Oh, okay, okay. And hopefully your hair goes back to the way it was. I mean, it does look really cute, though, just saying. Well, thank so you. Looks really cute. Okay. Okay, see okay. you later. Okay. Bye. <laughs> oh. Bye. <laughs> you don't have to wait that long to get in contact with Karen, actually. A little later in the school day, you all on your shared Discord chat get a message from Karen that says, Next time everyone's free, you should come over to my place. There's something I need to talk to you all about. It's best that you're there in person. I'm gonna invite Cass, too. We can make some plans. I can be there tonight! Like ten exclamation marks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there. 
Lucia only responds with a thumbs up emoji. <laughs> Valerie responds with a thumbs up and a purple heart. <laughs> cool. Tonight's good. All right. I'll see everybody then. And she gives you a sparkle heart emoji. <laughs> All right. <laughs> she is a sparkle heart girl. Yeah. Yeah. Only because there's no real pink heart. But I <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Crime. Who isn't a sparkle heart girl? Very true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's mainly a sparkle heart girl because I'm a sparkle heart girl. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so yes, the rest of the school day passes relatively without incident. You're able to have your first relatively normal school day in a while. But of course, this is probably all still hanging over your heads throughout the day, so it's still not great. But you all manage to get all your stuff together and make your way over to Karen's place in the evening. Do you think you're going to have like just an, a, like another sleepover with her? Or like is this all just like an evening get-together? Um, I think we're probably going to have a sleepover. Yeah, let's have another sleepover. Yeah. Yeah, and this time it could be a real sleepover. You're not going to do your heist, like, immediately tonight, like last time. <laughs> a a trauma-free sleepover. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> they, the kids deserve it. Yeah. yeah, so everybody arrives in whatever way they're going to arrive, and you see that Karen has moved couches back, so there's space in the middle of her living room for everybody to lay out all their stuff. And there's also conveniently a, a whiteboard set up on one end of the room with a bunch of red pens and magnetic pins and sticky notes and whatnot available for making corkboard plans and whatnot. So once Angie's done getting her sleeping bag all ready and all that kind of stuff, she's like, oh, finally, I have been dying to use this. And she goes into her backpack and she pulls out like one of those pointer things and she extends it. <laughs> and then she's like, lick guys. And then she like points to random parts on the board. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> She so deserves cool. it. Yeah. And uh, about when does Cass turn up, do you think? Probably like a few minutes after the main people have arrived and settled in. There's like a surprise doorbell ringing. Maybe people think it's pizza, but no, it's just Cass. <laughs> Aww. Cass is better than pizza. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's high praise. Although there is also pizza here. <laughs> Cassie just sat him next to the pizza delivery guy. <laughs> they yeah. both arrived at the same time. <laughs> yeah. He just like gave you the pizza and was like, can you just, okay, cool, thanks, kid, and like left. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that Cass holding probably too many pizzas <laughs> to see who it is holding the pizza. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. We're teenagers. There's just like a ton of pizza. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you help? This is surprisingly heavy. Oh, I've got it here. And oh. Angie takes it with like one hand. No problem. <laughs> Thanks. And I think like, and just the whole course is like, Cass! Cass! Once it's like revealed who's behind yeah. the yeah. 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 history yeah. pizza. Hey, good to see you. Are you here for a sleepover as well? Yep, that's what Karen invited me for. Oh, good, good. It's nice to see you again. Yeah, join us. Lucia immediately turns to Karen and just, okay, so everybody's here, spill. Yes, um, everybody is here, aren't they? And, yeah, no, I... And she's already eating a piece of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think Karen is, actually. I think she's been a little bit more quiet than you're used to her being throughout all of this, actually. Like, smiling when is appropriate and talking when is appropriate, but, like, even for Karen, she's been a little bit quiet. <laughs> So she's responding when you say spill. She's like, yeah, no, no, I, I guess. Um, God, it really is time to spill, isn't it? I mean, if you, if you want to. It's okay, Slugger. Just breathe in. Take, take a minute. <sighs> yeah, no. Um, so I, have, for, I guess before we do anything, I, I guess I should have waited till we had some pizza because, like, I, I don't want it to get cold, but... Maybe everybody sit down f for a bit. Okay. Because I've got some, I, like I said, I've got something to tell everybody. Yeah, Jaden just sits on the ground um, with the legs crossed and looks up at Karen. I can tell you're nervous, so maybe, you know, just have a slice of pizza before you dive right in. Because you might feel like you won't want to eat after, or it'll be cold after. Mm -hmm. so. Maybe. Yeah, whenever, whenever you're ready. I don't know, it might just make me nauseous too. Lucia grabs one of the boxes and, like, actually carries it around so everybody can grab a piece. 
stops okay. by Karen and offers. She can be nice. <laughs> <laughs> actually, before you get close enough to Karen to actually give her pizza, uh, you know, maybe it's best to just... And suddenly, Lucia, the piece of pizza in your hand is gone. And it is in Karen's hands. And it wasn't a second ago. Uh, oh, shut oh. up. Are you a magician? <laughs> uh, um, what just happened? Karen? Um, so there's no easy way to, like, ease into this. Um, I have powers and have the whole time. What? No way. That's, You're an that's idol? That's so cool. Um, I can do a couple things. And she holds the slice of pizza up and looks at it for a second like she's concentrating on it and it transforms into a light stick. And she does it again and it transforms into a small bag of popcorn and then a slingshot, a rubber <laughs> chicken, that kind of stuff. Whoa. What? what? Um, uh... That's more than I thought. And then back into a piece of pizza. Holy shit. And after she finishes doing that, she sits down on the couch and looks like she has to breathe for a second. Like, okay, sorry, doing that, doing that a bunch of times in a row takes it out of me a bit. Take, give me, give me a second or two. Lucia looks her over, like, really looks her over, because this is like same old Karen that we always know, right? Like, doesn't look any different. Clothes are the same. Exactly the same outfit you would have seen her wearing. Like, all of the time. Like, she doesn't wear the exact same outfit every day, but, like, sh she dresses how she dresses. Yeah, she's she's always in style. And and her body and hair and everything don't look different either. Mm. Uh, Cass has questions and has raised her hand. <laughs> um, Cass, yeah, um, wh what, what can I, what can I answer? Uh, how, how did you do that? Was that... A matter reconfiguration, or was it just, were you just teleporting the pizza away in place of the other objects, or did it actually turn into the objects? Um, uh, good question. It is, it is a matter reconfiguration. Like, it's more accurately, it's actually a, a reality warping. That's kind of what all of what I can do is based on. Um, like, I can also, she takes a second to breathe, and then poof, she's not on the couch anymore, and she reappears on the other side of the room. Ah! I'm not teleporting when I do that. What I'm doing more is pulling reality towards myself in another direction, and it appears to everyone else that I've teleported. Oh. Are you transformed? Is this your idol form? Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. No, um... See, that's, that's kind of part of the reason I didn't tell you all this before now. It's, mm, what I've got going isn't normal super idol powers. Th I, I can't transform. This is just how I am. And actually, it's, it's not even accurate to say that I have powers. What I have is... More like outside help. Out outside help. Are you an alien? No, <laughs> she she does laugh a little bit at that. Um, I think at at this point, uh, Valerie hasn't said anything, but she's been looking at her phone and she holds up the picture that she took the first time she visited Karen's house with with Valerie, Jaden, Karen, and Amberly, and some kind of yeah, the old just slightly out of focus orb behind them and points at it. Yep. No, the, you you got it. Um, and she walks back over to the couch to sit down because it, it seems like this is taking it out of her a little bit. As she sits down and recollects herself a bit, she looks over to a seemingly empty space at her side, to the side of the arm of the couch. And she stares off into that space for a few moments before nodding and, and, and saying, <sighs> It's okay. I I think it's time. I'm kind of, you know, it'll be kind of a relief. And then she looks back to all of you and says, I don't know if you'll be able to see them, but I have this friend. 
And they've been with us the whole time. They've been with me for, well, a lot longer, let's say. They're just very hard to perceive, is the thing. If you know that they're there, you might be able to focus enough to see them for a moment. But even if you know where to look, it can be very difficult. So, I don't know, do you want to give it all a try? Um, I guess everyone- here, I'll be polite, everyone. This is- this is my friend. They're right here next to me. Their head is just near the level of mine. Tell me if you can see anything. And what I'm gonna have you all do now is I'm actually gonna have every character just roll a straight up freak check to see if they can perceive Karen's friend. Ooh, okay. Nope. <laughs> That's a miss. Um... Dead on. Got a 14. Oh, oh yeah. my god. Yeah, actually, it would make a lot of sense for Lucia to be able to see them, so this, this yeah, is great. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. Wow, a miss. Oh, um, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, no, can't see them. Uh, hi. And she waves in, like, a slightly different direction from where... <laughs> so, I have... Influence over Karen. Is this something I could use, or is this specifically? <laughs> oh, hey! Actually, that probably would help. Yeah, I'm gonna bump my up to a seven using influence. Please. Yeah, if anybody does have influence over Karen, um, sure. So in that case, to recap for the listeners, Lucia is the only one who rolled a perfect hit on this, so <laughs> Lucia's gonna get the most. We'll get Lucia. We'll get to Lucia's perception last. In that case, <laughs> Angie won't be able to see this friend at all, unfortunately. And the rest of you rolled various mixed successes. So what you're going to see, you can focus like really, really hard. And for like the briefest flicker of a second, you think you might see the silhouette of something that is kind of black and silvery that might have horns or antlers or something like that. And a great mass of dark blackness underneath it with a slight flash of color. But as soon as you see it, it's it's gone. Like, it's really hard to keep your focus in this space. It's not that this creature is invisible, necessarily. It's that your brain just wants to keep sliding off it. And Lucia, since you... This actually makes great sense for you. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of glad that you're the one who's able to see this. Again, it's not that this creature is fully invisible, but there is, like, a refracting of light going on that I think Lucia would be able to see through a little bit better. And what Lucia sees is what resembles a floating metallic deer skull with three curved black horns on top of their head. And they have these multitudes of cloudy black tendrils reaching out in every which way from the base of the skull. And the tendrils seem to be pulsating and growing and shrinking and reaching in and out of visible space even as they're just floating there in place. Um, and to top it all off, they have a, a nice little small assortment of uh, pink, yellow, and blue bows on their antler horns. Oh they, they pop very God. nicely against all the black. Aww. <laughs> well, well, that makes it better. What kind of eldritch horror is that, Karen? What? What? Um, and as soon as you say that, it pops out of your vision again. <laughs> Can I try to perceive it again? Yeah, you can try. <laughs> you don't have to. Mm. You don't have to roll for it. Once you've seen it, it makes it easier to perceive them again. Um, but yeah. again, like as soon as you lose even a bit of your concentration, you're gonna lose sight of it again. <laughs> yeah, Lucia's gonna like go up, and she so desperately wants to touch it, but I don't think she will. <laughs> I think she's just like <laughs> leaning in, so she's almost like nose to nose with this thing. So everybody else just <laughs> sees Lucia like slowly but surely bending over this like armrest and her eyes are just like, <laughs> huge <laughs> and they nod in your direction you can't hear anything from them but they nod in your direction to acknowledge um that you're in their space mm -hmm. um valerie just sort of under her breath says that's really metal <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's metal as hell I saw a silhouette. What, what does it look like? Um, it's like a freaky little skull, but it's kind of cute. Um, um, I can only see like a squiggle. I can't see anything. It's, it's over there. Can I transform? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. 
I'd like to transform and then roll for burn and hope okay. for the best. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, thank goodness. Oh, oh my oh God. Thankfully, the, the dice have rolled in, in Drax's favor for once. Oh, thank God. <laughs> and um, I'm going to immediately use one burn um, to use elemental awareness. Um, <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Spend one burn and mark a condition, and I'll mark uh, probably not guilty, not hopeless. I don't know any of these. I'll think about it. I don't know what fits right now. Um, but um, Yeah, sure. I mean, it's kind of spooky looking. I already have afraid to mark. Oh. So, well, yeah. sorry, you're scared of God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, spend one burn and mark a condition to open your mind up to the world around you with your powers. You can ask one question about the world around you and the gym will answer honestly. Um, can I just see this thing? Is that I'm not, is that okay um, to bend the rules mm. for it there? Or can I ask mm. a question about this thing Lucy's looking at, what is it? Could that be a question? I'll allow you to, to like see it as clearly as Lucia can see it briefly as part of this. Okay, yeah. And I think the answer I'll give you is as you're like trying to perceive Karen's friend more and trying to get a better read on them, you feel something that's not totally unlike the magic fog that you felt in the Neon District. Not exactly like that. It's not like oh, that's the smoking gun. It's more like it's something in that family of energies that d- just feels like it doesn't belong here. And you can intuit from that that it it is not something of this world, which you could probably tell from their appearance, but still, <laughs> it's nice to confirm. Yeah, I think um, what it looks like when he's using this ability is his eyes kind of flicker between like red a white just like the colors of the elements he controls and every so often you see like a little flicker of electricity sparking from his eyes as he's staring around where the creature should be Mm. um karen how have you always had this friend not not always um and i don't know if i'm ready to tell the story of how we met or well how long things have been like this but I can tell you that the way this works, um, my friend and I are linked in this kind of cosmic symbiotic relationship is the best way I think about it. Um, so what we've got is basically my friend lets me use their powers and keeps me young and healthy, and in return they sustain themselves on my life energies. And... It's it before you say anything, it's an entirely consensual thing. They didn't force this on me. Um, but it is it's still kind of tough to talk about how this happened because there's some some pain attached to that time in my life. Um maybe I'll be ready to get into that another time. But um I can assure you, at least, that that they were not the cause of that pain. They are genuinely my friend, I'm genuinely theirs, and they want to help me help you because we both feel guilty about not helping the first time. You said keep you young. Karen, how long have you been in high school? She kind of like, as serious as this conversation is, I think she expected this question might come up and she kind of turns away in a semi-dramatic Edward Cullen fashion and says, a while. Is that an answer? Hello? <laughs> How long Why? have you been 17? And she says, and she's like super excited. <laughs> it's technically, it's how long have I been 19? But yeah, whatever. You know, it's been a bit longer than um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of embarrassed to say, uh, but uh, I, I will say just to be clear, I'm, I'm not some kind of ancient vampire or demigod or anything like that. I haven't been alive for centuries or anything like that i i was born and raised right here in bc my mom immigrated from japan she married my dad after they became friends and they fell in love and i um and and she stops at that and she appears to swallow a lump in her throat before continuing i don't know if i'm comfortable getting into that part of things right now but um suffice to say I could legitimately get into those age-restricted places we've been to if I wanted to. So it's not actually a fake ID. <laughs> well, it is, but yeah. Oh, oh. I mean, 
the the fact that I'm legally dead. Um, I can't really get a real ID. Um, that's uh, that's not important, right? That, um, that's oh. not important right now. That's kind yeah, of yeah. Cass does a spit take at that last bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just whole drops of pizza on the ground, or at least whole slices of pizza on the ground. Um, <laughs> I told you we should have saved the pizza for later, uh, or done it first, or something. I don't know. Jaden is taking this weirdly in stride. He's like, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, that does explain why you know so much about idol history. Yeah, no, it's it's been a while. Um, it's definitely been at least um uh, a couple of rounds through the system. I'll get I'll say that much at least. <laughs> a couple of rounds through the system. Does anyone else know, or or just us? Um, there there is one other person who knows. Um, Amberly knows. And she's the only person I've ever told about this. So, the, you, you can see it was why it was a big thing for, for me to <laughs> tell you all this now. And I'm glad that you're listening. Honestly, you're all making this a lot easier than I thought it would be. Who the hell is Amber Lee? Oh, Licia, Amber Lee was the last... Oh, what's the word for the, the thing? Uh, president? A president? A president, president? That's the word. <laughs> a prime that's, minister. Listen, <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah, she okay. was the last prime minister of the Fort McNally Idol Club. She's Solara. You don't know Solara? No, you know what? It's I. Yes, heard word, understood. So legally dead. Cool. Uh, I think Valerie has been still been very quiet and steps forward and and says um, that this is a lot, but. I I know I know it would be. I I it's obvious why you would keep it a secret, and it means a lot that that you would trust all of us with this. Mm. Yeah, no, I think at this point, it's it's been hard for me to trust people for a long time, and you've done so much to risk yourselves and just to help people, and like I, I really wish I I just gotten the stones to help you the first time maybe things wouldn't have gone so badly that time if i had i mean it didn't go that bad last time i mean we're all here uh we all still got to go to camp and Mm. valerie says again under her breath nobody died that's right nobody died exactly nobody died Mm mm-hmm i guess valerie said it a little louder than she expected (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. yeah Yeah, and and especially you, Cass, like bringing you in from from outside like this, and you you were so ready to like throw yourself into a dangerous situation without even knowing anybody except for for me, and I I, I really respect that, and I I really feel like I let you down by not reciprocating that kind of bravery. I think it's understandable if you're like totally immortal. Oh uh, well, not really. Uh, well, it's more like I don't age, but if I take a lot of damage, it's going to be um, bad. You you saw what happened after the downpour incident. Hmm. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Again, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Oh, no, don't worry. Like, you're still really new to your powers. And like I've said to you before, like, this isn't the first time I've... <laughs> been hurt in the line of idle fire <laughs> it really does help having a friend who can help along the healing process i re- i will say um and she gives like a wry grin to the seemingly empty space next to her and now that she is not worried about people seeing she reaches up into the empty air and gives like a fist bump to the air <laughs> valerie turns to where she saw this entity and nods and tells them thank you yeah, and you can't really see much, but like if you're focusing on that spot, you catch like a flash of like a glint of silvery metal and a light pink and blue bows nodding in your direction. I gotta admit, the bows are a nice touch. Kind of creepy, but like cool. They were apprehensive at- about them at first, but I think they really like them now. I told them that it made them look cute. Yeah. That uh, she's nodding now. Yeah, no, they <laughs> they really like them by now. Does your friend have a name? Not really. They're not fond of names in their culture. Um, so that's kind of why I just keep calling them friend. Sometimes friendy, you know, just as a short name. But that's... I, I want to respect their wishes. 
the math symbols around Lucia's mind right now <laughs> and <laughs> their culture. Um, she doesn't say anything. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, thank you for telling us, Karen. I'm not going to tell anyone. Thank you. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to tell anyone. I've read enough comics to know what happens when these things are told to like the government. And like, you can't tell your parents or any cool adult that you've ever spoken to, Jaden. This one you really have to be quiet about. I, I haven't told. Why do you think I would tell my parents? And I think Angie just looks at him. It just gives him a flat look. <laughs> Queen Bee joins the look. Okay, fine. I won't tell anyone. I wasn't planning to, but I definitely won't tell my parents, okay? I've read enough comics to know what happens. Because they could tell the government, even oh, if- They would never, but the government might kidnap them and torture them until they tell someone. That happened in a comic I read once. I mean, torture is not really a way of extracting useful intel. I mean, tell, tell the, the government, government that. that. Oh, jinx. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying they don't do it. I'm just saying you can't really rely on the intel that's extracted via torture. Anyways. It's true. It's true. It's better that they don't know. It's better yeah. that they don't. But don't don't you worry. I've been out running people and various things for a long time, and I'm pretty good at it by now. So actually, you know, there, there's a funny thing about this uh, this whole apartment. You know, there's a reason I haven't really been found here that much. Um, and... <laughs> She she gets up and actually directs you all to follow her up the stairs to the front door. Um, normally, we would make a switch when I get to the top of the stairs like this. Um, but here's what happens when we don't. And she opens the door and it reveals like just kind of a swirling dark star space outside. Um, you are inside a pocket dimension currently. Oh. Uh, huh. Um. Oh, great. Oh. Physics. Okay. Wow. Cass has her phone out, and there's a list of questions to ask later, because now is not the time to ask questions, and has stuff like, stand versus persona, question mark? <laughs> <laughs> Did Karen get isekai Yes. <laughs> Wi-Fi in pocket dimension, exclamation, question mark? <laughs> Cass and Jaden need to talk. <laughs> Hey there, everyone. How's it going? So, how's things? <laughs> how, uh, how about that Karen lore, huh? <laughs> uh, seriously, I'm, I'm super glad that folks are finally getting to hear all this stuff about her. A lot of this is stuff that I have literally been holding in since day one of the podcast. One of the very first things I had planned about Karen was that... I wanted her to be the comedy character with a dark secret, and her having this man in the tan jacket type familiar was also one of the first things I put in my notes about her. So, um, yeah, <laughs> it's been a long time coming to pay this off. And I was, I was just really tickled pink by everyone's reactions to it, I think you can tell. <laughs> and there is more to tell on this front. Uh, most likely it'll be in arc three. After all, the action from this arc has calmed down a bit more. Um, I know this ac- this episode isn't very action-packed, but um, just just wait for the next few. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I didn't want to open the floodgates on all the details of Karen's backstory, mostly because I didn't want my GM PC to hog any more of the spotlight from the actual PCs than she already had, um, and especially not when we still have a big heist that we need to get through while Alice was still with us in the session. And yes, that means you will be hearing a lot more of Cass again in the next episode. <laughs> um, but yeah. Other than that, our March Masksness special is still on the way, most likely a little bit later this week. I'm ideally hoping to get that out before Friday, but at the very latest it'll be by the 31st. So again, look forward to that. And if you want something else to listen to in the meanwhile, Super Idols actually has a couple of crossover appearances on other podcasts that you should check out. Most notably, if you want some more Karen after this episode, I played her on two podcasts this month. The first was episode two of Power Dunk Super Sports 2022, hosted by Apex City, which is the uh, official, unofficial March Masksness discussion podcast. Um, it's an in-character interview type show, so I brought Karen on to discuss the March Masksness bracket along with Mystic from Otherwhere and Darren, aka The Flash, 
from the excellent new Masks podcast, Dice Comics. You should definitely check that out. Um, but also, last year, I went on the podcast, listened to these nerds, and I got to play Karen as a PC in a one-shot. And now that session's finally out for the public to listen to. I played Karen as a beacon, because I was still trying to conceal her powers when we recorded that, but I think you will find, um, if you know what's going on with her, you'll find it's it's still pretty slyly true to her real abilities. <laughs> and uh, more importantly, it was just a really fun and funny session. Uh, you don't have to know anything about Listen to These Nerds or any of the other characters represented in the one shot to enjoy it. It's just, think of it as Karen meeting a few random superheroes in another dimension and going on a, a short little adventure with them. If you think that sounds fun, uh, the episode is called Anyone Know a Good Place for Dinosaur Wings? And the link to it is in the description. And last but certainly not least, around the same time that I recorded this one shot with Karen, Dana joined the crew of Otherware along with representatives from podcasts like Outstanding for a one shot as well. Uh, for this one, she got to play an alternate version of Vivi, who lives in Otherware's Prime Dimension. And in that universe, she takes on the superhero identity of Viridian Vigilance. Mm. Um, it's, it's a really, really interesting look at the life of a Vivi whose Mary Rain is more of an actual mentor to her. Like, this Vivi is a protege in this one-shot, not a doomed. Uh, and it's also a one-shot where we get to see her focus more on actual superheroing, while also still being her fabulously floofy self. Um, again, this is a great fun time. There's a lot of good characters bouncing off each other. You don't have to know a ton about Otherware or any of those other characters to enjoy the one shot. Um, so you, you should be sure to check that one out as well. It's a real fun time. Again, the link will be in the description. Anyway, I think that's all I've got for today. Shout out as always to our $5 Patreon subscribers for this episode. Aurabolt, Pike, Lady Plague, Blake1995, Noreen, Circus, Sensei1477, Misty, T, and Rowan B. Thank you all so much as always for supporting the show. And I think that is all for me for the middle bit. I guess it's not so much of a middle bit because it's near the end of the episode, but sue me, there wasn't a great place to put this break. <laughs> Be sure to check out this week's ad for our fellow Be Gay Roll Dice Network podcast, The Eternity Archives, and I'll talk to you again next time. Hi, welcome to the Eternity Archives, an actual play podcast where we take on the role of archivists, working for an interdimensional library that catalogs and protects the fabric of reality. As archivists, we are tasked with journeying out into the realms, taking on characteristics of people from that reality, and remedying whatever issues may be causing a disturbance in the dimension. Every arc, we will be playing a different RPG, maybe even returning to systems we like later on. But this is a fun way for us as players and you as listeners to explore and learn about different tabletop systems. We'll discuss the rules, create sheets for our characters, and play a short campaign to get a feel for the game. Afterwards, we'll do a bit of discussion. We'll talk about what we liked and didn't like, and what we'd know to do better next time. My name is Babby, and I am playing Riddle de Jaquel. They are a tiefling nerd baby. I'm Ziva, and I am playing Linda, the lovable human office lady. And I'm Dorka. I play Zen, the Barbarian Lizard Princess. Let's get down to some actual playing. Are y'all ready? Yeah! Yeah, let's go, boys! This, this is, is the Eternity Archives. Archives. And she says, apropos of nothing, the Wi-Fi actually is pretty good in here. You know, Once you manipulate the signals from the other reality, it's pretty great to get a good signal in here. Yeah, it's totally wild. Hold on a second. Wait. When we... Okay. This explains... I mean, depending on your answer, this explains a lot. When we're coming for a name, Rhythmics, did you actually know what we were doing when you gave us the extra X? She, she, she blushes a bit like, yeah, I should apologize for that too. I know I shouldn't spy on people, but it's kind of fun sometimes when you can. I knew it. I knew it. It, it, she takes a second to concentrate and manifests a little sphere above her hand and you can see in the sphere is a view of the club classroom. I don't know about this one, Karen. Can't say I'm a fan. Yeah, well, 
I don't know. I th- I, I'll, it, I'll admit it's okay. that's not. It's I. I am sorry about that. I will apologize for that. I've I've fallen into a little bit of um, immortal moral grayness. You'd say. I think it's cool. Is that just me? It's it's actually it's probably pretty good that I finally told someone about it. So I don't like just keep justifying between me and my friend um, the reasons why I'm doing anything. Um, it's probably good to have someone else to be accountable to for once. So that ability there, can you just put that anywhere? There's limits on it. If the further away it is, the harder it is to do. And if it's a space that I don't know, uh, even harder, because basically the more complex stuff we want to do, the more energy that Friendy has to use to do that, and then I'll get more tired. Mm-hmm. So, like, say, just to create this space, I was out for, for weeks after I first moved in here. So the reason I ask is maybe we can't this time, but maybe we just sneak into Mr. Cervantes' office just so you know what it looks like. Hmm. Yeah, no, I'd like to do that. And I actually, th- that's another, now that we've gotten past the big part, um, I have some more to tell all of you. Um, and she takes you back down the stairs and closes the door. So, you know, during the school day, you know you don't see me much around the school, right? Yeah. Yeah. As far as teachers are concerned, I'm in, like, an advanced program where they don't have to keep track of me that much. It's more like a like a high school degree finishing program. So it's sort of like part-time schooling. So I have some leeway to be out of the school building during the day a good amount of the time. And today um, I ended up, well, we ended up taking a little trip of our own to Crimson Signal HQ to poke around at a couple of things as much as we could within like what the limits of what I can do. Um, so I poked around a couple of the areas that you've been to, just so I would be on the same page with all of you when we go in there. And I did try to get into a couple of other places, but here's an interesting thing that we found. There are definitely a couple areas of the building that even my friend can't access. There's some kind of, what did you call it? And she turns to the space where the friend is and nods and like, Co- cosmic entanglement, right? Basically, there are areas in there where threads of reality have become twisted and difficult to manipulate. That secret room is one of them. The empty 13th floor is one, too. I haven't tried the executive floor yet, because I was getting really tired by the time I thought about that. Um, so we could go there, maybe, but I haven't tried. But there's a chance if it's protected the same way those two areas are, we might not be able to get in that way. Okay, well, spying on Mr. Cervantes, we can do that after. Yeah, I'll see if I can at least get one of my little wormhole spheres in there at some point. And definitely, if I'm able to, like, physically go there first, that'll make that way easier. Does your friend know who could do something like that? Not offhand. Um, In a way, they're kind of, or at least... They started off kind of as lost in this world as anyone. Um, they're, they're not necessarily more knowing than any of us if they haven't experienced something. Do you think it could have been an, another one of them? Like, what do I call your friend? Did they, did they have a name? Um, you, can, you can call them Friendy if you really need one. Friendy. Okay. What if there's an, another member of the Friendy species i mean honestly that would be wonderful if it is because they've been looking for more of their kind for so long now like to be honest they're kind of stranded here and have been for a while oh so if it is that would be great assuming they're not doing something bad they could be they could be exploited in a way this is crimson signal yeah mm-hmm. and they were like I mean, they sucked my powers, so... And she nods. They don't think it feels like one of their own. It definitely feels like something that, like, they can sense, so it might be 
something that has access to similar abilities, but it's hard to tell, like, if it's something like them or if it's something else. I mean, honestly, that's probably a good thing, because if they're able to suck out Angie's powers and your friend has all those really, really, like, amazing reality bending powers, I think, honestly, the last thing we need is Crimson Signal getting their hands on something like that. Mm Mm-hmm. Exactly. So I really hope if we get into that secret area, we can figure out more about what's going on there. Whatever it it is, it might be similar to your friend, though. Um, Do you all remember when we all, um, I guess, when this all started and we ended up following that fog or mist? And I, I guess I sensed, kind of sensed it. Your friend has a similar feeling. Not the same, but similar family kind of deal. Like, um, hmm. yeah. Interesting. I, the, the, she's nodding in the, in, fr- in the friend's direction. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a, That's good to know. Maybe, maybe it is something. Maybe it is another being like them. I, I don't know if that would be a good or bad thing, but I'd be interested to find out. I think it could be really bad. Mm hmm. I think it's bad if Crimson Signal's involved. Yeah, it could be maybe that they've harnessed one of these creatures. Maybe they're working against their will. That's what I'm thinking. Mm. I mean, out of all of this, we don't trust Crimson Signal. So if they have access to this kind of power, I just don't believe that they made an agreement totally like above board, you know? And I mean... My family embezzled stuff, but we never just kidnapped people, you know? Mm-hmm. And it was just money. Yeah, and it, it, Karen is nodding, presumably with her friend at this point, like, yeah, no, they're, they're saying, like, of course there's, like, differences between people, like, within their culture, but, like, on the whole, they wouldn't be down for something like that. If it is someone doing that consensually, that's not cool. Mm-hmm. Like I said, my entire th- with them is like they it was entirely consensual. They told me everything about what it would entail if I if I agreed to it. So, yeah, no, <laughs> they wouldn't just kidnap somebody like that. I trust you, Karen. And I think we need to go downstairs. And um, Angie reluctantly like shuts the door <laughs> <laughs> and finish our pizza And then I think we should talk about going back into Crimson Signal with this information that we know now. Mm -hmm. I I agree. Is everybody ready for some good old-fashioned heist brainstorming? Yeah! yeah. When you go back down the stairs, you see Valerie has been listening, but has just stayed downstairs and been eating pizza quietly. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of overstimulated at the moment oh yeah uh Cass has been kind of hanging back and staring wide-eyed at everyone who keeps bringing up things she had no idea someone disappeared in a mist fog <laughs> Angie's parents <laughs> embezzled money <laughs> so many revelations <laughs> oh yeah um they did but they don't anymore they were arrested <laughs> would Lucia have heard anything <laughs> yeah I think as you lead into the heist planning maybe somebody sits down to explain to Cass okay, a couple of things yeah. <laughs> I don't think even like the rest of the party really knew I think Angie might have like assumed they knew because there was it's a small enough town that word gets around so that yeah. she might have just yeah. assumed by reputation they knew, but mm. it's totally possible that they don't really give a fuck about the news and then just they were like, wait, what? <laughs> I, in my heart, want to believe that Lucia's mom was the judge for the case. <laughs> oh, oh, no. No. oh, no. Oh, no. Yes, please. Miss. Yeah, I please. mean, yes, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Jaden knew. But I think hearing that with the fact that their friend Karen has a persona, 
or a stand and we're currently in their pocket I mentioned I feel like that's really small in comparison to everything he's learning today I think that's um, why so, she dropped it I think yeah. that's why she dropped the bomb she's like no one's yeah. gonna care that my parents are embezzlers after this <laughs> <laughs> like my parents are criminals um she's dead so you know <laughs> so you know it's like yeah, yeah does anybody else have any deeply held secrets they want to drop in the wake um, of that I burned my system once it was an accident it was when my powers oh came my god <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I'm sure you did everything to help her afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, honestly, I I still feel bad about it, but she always tells me that it's okay, and she's glad that I'm doing what I'm passionate about. Man, if my siblings knew that I had powers and I hurt them, I would like never hear the end of it. I mean, granted, they don't know half of the things I've done to them, um, since I've gotten my powers, but whoo, man. Yeah, no, they wouldn't let me hear the end of it. <laughs> I mean, I've had to, like, super physically resist just throwing my little brother outside of the house. And I, you know what? I think, all things considered, since I've never done it, I think I'm doing well. All right, Angie, I remember that one time you asked me if I had a, a sibling and I said you could say that. <laughs> Oh. And she she nudges her head over in the direction. Okay, thank you, because I was waiting until after this recording to be like, is this, a, is this her sibling? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it would be good to clear that up for anyone here who might be listening. <laughs> yep, and then we all turn to look at the camera and break the fourth wall. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> hey, Karen, here's a really good list of manga that I feel like you would enjoy. From everything you just revealed to us, uh, just give you a list of like <laughs> just oh. stuff related to this, like definitely Persona. Um, oh. And Jojo. she's like, she looks over it like, oh yeah, read that. Yep. Oh, oh read that. Um, read- oh, haven't oh. heard of that one. Oh, and <laughs> writes the title on her hand. Va- Valerie looks up and says, M- "Mob Psycho 100." Oh yeah, that's a good one. I haven't had, oh. didn't have that one. I've list. been meaning to get to that one. So while these nerds are over here talking, um, <laughs> Lucia's going <laughs> to look to Angie, walk over, hands on her hips, and just, let's plan, as like she stares at the board. Okay. And then she pulls out her pointer stick. <laughs> She's <laughs> so excited to use it. Perfect. And then we both matching hands on our hips, we both turn to look at the blank board. Yeah, I think... um. Cass will do a gesture and Polly will like swirl into a cloud of pixels and then project the blueprints of the Crimson Signal building onto the board. Ooh, nice. Ooh, that's cool. Lucia grabs one of the markers, ready to go. All right, everybody. Let's plan a heist. That's the pizza, will you? so much for listening to Super Idols RPG and thanks to the wonderful cast of today's episode. Valerie slash Violence Violet was played by Dane Alexa, who can be found on Twitter at Author X. Angie slash Bane Raven was played by T. Jaden slash Elementum was played by Drac, who can be found on Twitter at Draconix. Alan slash Queen Bee was played by Luca, who can be found on Twitter at Queen Bee. 1516-0871. Lucia slash Trixie was played by Liv Chavez, who can be found on Twitter at Live in a Day. And special guest character Cassandra Cass Tora was played by Alice Lily Kira, who can be found on Twitter at Magical Girl Kira. Dialogue and cleanup editing was done by Kathleen Childs, whose work can be found on the Sword of Symphonies podcast at PeachGardenGames.com. GMing, final editing, and mastering for this episode was done by me, Aaron Cerise. You can find me on Twitter and YouTube at Aaron Cerise, and you can find more information and art for Super Idols on our website at superidolsrpg.wordpress.com. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. Our opening theme is Le Chevalier Noir Instrumental by Cyborg Jeff, and is under license from Jumendo Music. Our ending theme is Born to Drive Me Crazy Instrumental by Humans Win and is under license from Storyblocks.com. All other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from Storyblocks.com and Freesound.org. Thank you all for listening. Stay well.
and goodbye until next time. Be gay. Roll dice. An LGBTQIA actual play podcast network.